Hello friends, this video on mensuration part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will look at polygons. So we have been gradually knowing how to find out area and perimeter of many different geometrical shapes. So let's talk about polygons. So what is a polygon? It is a simple closed fit curve made up of only line segments. So let us look at some of the closed curves and find out which are polygons. So here on the screen you see some closed curves. For example, the first one is a rectangle. So this is a closed curve, a simple curve as well. Now what is a simple curve? Simple curve is one which doesn't cross over itself. For example, if you have a curve like this. So this is not simple because at these points the curve passes over itself or it intersects itself. So that is not a simple curve. For But for a polygon, they are all simple curves. Simple curve, closed curve and here if you see rectangle, it is made up of four line segments. You look at this one, it is made up of six line segments. Look at this one, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve line segments. Here you have three, here you have five, here you have four and here you have eight line segments. So these are all polygons which are made up of only line segments and they are also simple closed curve. Now the question is how do we find out the area of a polygon? So we have already talked about quite a few polygons for example the quadrilateral and the different types of quadrilaterals. We have also spoken about the triangles. Let's now talk about a polygon with more number of sides for example a pentagon that is with five sides. So in this case, let us suppose A, B, C, D, E is a pentagon and we have to find out the area of this pentagon. So what are we going to do? Again, we are going to take the help of triangulation. That is, we are going to divide this pentagon into triangles and then we will find out the area of the triangles, add them up to get the area of the pentagon. So how do we draw, how do we triangulate this pentagon? So for that again we will draw diagonals. So let's say that we draw the diagonal AC and AD. So the moment we draw diagonals, so what we did, we draw diagonals AC and AD. So what, what happened as a result of this? So as a result of this we got three triangles. So what are the three triangles? Triangle ABC triangle ACD and triangle ADE. So triangle number 1, 2 and 3. So we obtained 3 triangles. So now what we need to do? So now you need to find out the area of these 3 triangles, sum them up to get the area of the pentagon. Now in order to find out the area of these triangles, you would definitely need to know the measurement of the diagonals AC and AD because area of each triangle would be half into base into height, right? So base would be the diagonal and height would be the perpendicular drawn on the diagonal. So like these. So these perpendiculars would be needed. So you would basically need the measurement of the diagonals and also the perpendiculars on the diagonals. So if you have them all, you would be able to find out the area of the pentagon. So this was our option number one. So this was option number one where we divided the pentagon into three triangles, find their area and add them up. But we also have an option number two where we divide this pentagon into such a way that we divide it into three triangles and one rectangle. Would you like to see how? Okay, for that, for the same pentagon, we draw a diagonal like this, BE. So we draw BE and then we draw these perpendiculars from the vertices. Like we draw the perpendicular from A, we draw a perpendicular from C, and we also draw a perpendicular from D. So basically in the second option, we draw BE and we also draw perpendiculars from point A, C and D on BE. 
So we draw one diagonal and then we draw perpendiculars from all the remaining three vertices on that diagonal. So once we do that, what happens? We basically end up dividing it into three triangles and one rectangle. So what are the three triangles? Triangle A, B, E. Triangle C, B, G. What is G? Let's call this point as G and let's call this point as H. Let's call this point as F. So triangle A, B, E, the top triangle, then triangle C, B, G, this, this, this portion, this triangle is C, B, G. Similarly, you have this triangle which is D, E, H, triangle D, E, H. Plus, we have one rectangle. What is that rectangle? It is C, D, H, G. So basically, you have one triangle, two triangle, three triangle. The top region is one triangle. This whole thing is one triangle. And then you have this remaining portion, which is a rectangle. So how do you find out the area of the pentagon? Sum of the areas of these three triangles plus this rectangle. Now, always it is not necessary that this would be a rectangle because in this case, the pentagon that we have considered, it is like a quite uniform and regular pentagon. Now, you might have pentagons like these as well. For example, here in this case, if the pentagon is like this. So in that case, even if you draw BE and then you draw the perpendicular from all the other three vertices, what do you get? You get one triangle ABE, one triangle CFB. Let's call this as G, let's call this as H. So you basically get three triangles and one trapezium. So this center region in this case is not a rectangle. Instead, this is a trapezium. So in this case, how will you find out the area of the pentagon? Area of triangle ABE. So here triangle ABE plus the area of triangle CBF plus area of triangle DGE plus area of the trapezium CDGF. So this is how you would find out the area of this pentagon. Similarly, if you have a pentagon like this, here also if you look at this portion, this is not a rectangle. So why? how do we know this is not a rectangle? You see, the opposite sides are not parallel. Therefore, the all angles are not equal to 90 degrees and therefore it is not a rectangle. So this is again a trapezium. So in this case also in a similar way we can find out the area of the pentagon. So basically the concept is that whenever you are given a polygon you need to make use of triangulation so that you can divide it into triangles and rectangles or trapezium and then find out their areas add them up to get the area of the polygon. Now let us look at a hexagon now. Now, a hexagon can be a regular hexagon, that is a hexagon with all the six sides equal in length. Or it could be an irregular hexagon where all the six sides are not equal, they are of different lengths. So, in case of a regular hexagon, your job becomes simpler. What you can do is just join BF and CE. So the moment you draw these two uh, these two lines, what happens? You end up dividing it into two triangles and one rectangle. So therefore, the area of the hexagon would be area of triangle ABF plus area of triangle DEC plus area of the rectangle BFEC. So it is that simple. So in that way, we can find out the area of the regular hexagon. Now, when it comes to the irregular hexagon, in that case, what do we do? Here also, we join BF. Here also, we join CE. But in this case, the difference is that all that you get in between, that is not a rectangle. So this is basically a trapezium. So these two sides are parallel, but these two sides are not parallel because BF is not parallel to CE. So in this case, this is a trapezium. So therefore here, the area of the hexagon would be given by area of triangle ABF plus area of triangle DCE plus area of the trapezium 
B C E F. So with this, I am trying to give you an idea that even if you are given a polygon of doesn't matter how many sides, just try to draw diagonals and divide it into triangles or rectangles and trapezium and then find out their individual areas, sum them up to get the area of the polygon. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.